Hi everyone, welcome to part four of this series that we're doing five Excel tricks you need to know. If you haven't watched parts one through three, please make sure you do so on our YouTube channel. We would really appreciate that. But let's jump right in. So our first trick we're going to discuss today is using the unique formula in Excel. Uh, so as you can see, I've got this list here. Let's say for instance, it's ticket sales. And as you can see, there's a bunch of people that have more that have bought more than one ticket. So I want to isolate these names, uh, all of the unique names in, in this table so that I don't have duplicates of the same names. So it's quite simple. You're just going to head over wherever you want to uh, have your information. We're going to do the equal sign and we're going to type in unique. And once you did that, you'll see it asks for the array, and your array is simply uh, the your list that you want to have a look at. So once you do that, we can actually just close, and if you enter, you'll see all of the unique names pop up in a single list. So that just simplifies and just speeds up your Excel work. So the next tip we're going to discuss is how to insert a spin button into your sheet. So I want this spin button to be connected to our quantities. And as soon as you change on your spin button, it will change your quantities and so does your formula. So in order to do this, we first need to add the developer tab to our ribbon. So anywhere on your ribbon, you can right click and you can just head over to customize the ribbon. Then these Excel options pop up will appear and on the right side, you'll scroll all the way down and see developer. We're just going to check that box there and we're going to press OK. So now that you can see the developer tab is in our ribbon at the top here. So I'm going to head over to the, that developer tab and I'm going to go in the control section on the ribbon, go to insert. From here, we'll insert our spin button. And now I can just draw the area that I want the button to be in. As soon as you've done that, you can see we've got our spin button here. And as soon as I click it, it really does nothing. And that's because it has not been linked to any cells yet. So I'm going to head over to format control. And in the format control, tab that's popped up onto your screen in the control section there's a part that says cell link so this is where we need to link the cell that we want to change with this with our spin button so as i said i'm going to link my quantities here so as soon as i link that you'll see if i press the spin button it automatically changes my quantities and and so does it just have the same effect on my formula. So you can just copy and paste your spin button anywhere. But as soon as you do this, this spin button is still linked to the quantities there. So I'm just, you just need to head over to that format control section and just link the cell that you want that spin button with. So as soon as you do that, you'll see this spin button is linked to its own cell as well as this one. And that's as simple as that. That's how you add a spin button to your Excel sheet. And it's a really fun, interactive way uh, that you can just get people involved in your spreadsheet. So the next tip we're going to discuss is the consolidate function in Excel. So what this basically means is that we're going to take, we're going to calculate the sum of these products and these total sales into one column. So the hard way to do this would be to just type in A and then you would just manually go and search for all of these products wherever and at the end of the day, you'll just add them up. So this is a simple explanation, but you'll understand what this consolid consolidate function can actually do in Excel. 
So from here, we will head over to the data section at the top of our ribbon. And once we're in that ribbon, we will head over to the data tools and we are going to click on consolidate. Then this pop-up window will appear and you can see on this functions section, there's actually a lot you can do with this consolidate uh, function. But for now, we're just going to stick with some and I'm just going to explain you how this works. So we're going to use this, the reference we're going to put in is our first section of the table that we want to include. And we're going to press add to add it to our, our references. Then we are just going to select the rest of our tables that we want to include. And we're just going to add them up until all of them are in our references here. Once that is done, you'll head over to the bottom section where you're going to click on your top row and your left column. You're going to check those two boxes and you're going to press OK. And you'll see all of your products here. You can just fill in product at the left top. And as you can see, all of your products and your sales will be included in this table. So that's a much quicker way to do this. And you can even do the average or maximum values, whatever you are looking for. You can use the consolidate function just to help you speed up your Excel workflow throughout the day. I hope this was helpful, guys. So our next trick that we are going to discuss is conditional formatting. And before you leave the video, just stick it through, please, because this is something interesting. I know a lot of you know exactly how to use conditional formatting, but this you might need in the future. So what I mean by this is, as you can see, we've got our search parameter at the top here, and I've put in my analyst here, and I've got this drop-down list. If you want to know how to insert a drop-down list in your Excel sheet, we've got a video on that on our YouTube channel. Just head over to our channel and please watch that video. It's very helpful. And as you can see, we've got our list here. And if I select anything, it automatically highlights each person that is either an analyst, technician, consultant, whatever you, you need. Uh, it highlights all of the information and it just makes it much easier to visually get all your data. So this is our goal for our conditional formatting. And let me show you how to do this. So in order to get our conditional formatting, as I've shown you, the, it's a really simple way to do this. And we are going to select our whole table, as you can see there, and we're going to hit in our home tab, we're going to hit over to our styles section and to conditional formatting. We're gonna click there and we're gonna say new rule so from here this new rule will pop up this section over here and there's a lot of options here for rule types that you can select you can play through all of these in your own time but we are going to head over to use a formula to, de to determine which cell to format once you've clicked on that we need to enter our formula that we are going to use for our conditional formatting so we're just going to put equals and then we are going to select our section number or cell number that we want to reference and we are going to use this format which basically states that it will keep us in column d throughout our worksheet and it will run through all of the rows that has been selected and from there it will determine if our job title matches our search parameter at the top here. So then we're going to click on production manager at the top here. You want to keep that format locked in like that. And once this is done, we can head over to our format section at the bottom here. And we can just pick a color. You can do any color you want. Uh, you can do fonts. There's a lot of options here. But I'm just going to, let's just make it bold. Our borders, borders are fine. All of the rest is fine. So I'm just going to click OK. And you can see this preview on how this will look. And once we click OK, you'll see our conditional formatting 
has been done. So once you click on anything, anything from your drop down list or you enter this manually, it doesn't matter how you want to do it. If you click on it, it will highlight your text, just as we said. And this is a neat tool when you're working with large lists and large lists of employees to actually highlight each employee and you can actually just go through the information from there. I hope this tip was helpful, guys. Stay tuned for the next one. So our next trick that we're going to discuss is using the formula concatenate. So this is basically to join these two columns, our first name and our last name, together with one another. I know the caps do look kind of strange on these, uh, but we are going to fix that as well. So I'm going to do the first example that I'm going to explain is I'm going to give you the whole formula that will be the correct caps and the correct spacing and everything on all of these. And then we will go into a breakdown of each section of that formula to give you a better idea how each section works. So let's kick it off. So we're going to type in the equal sign and we're going to say concatenate. And from here, we will be typing proper. I'll explain everything after we've done this, but we're going to put in proper and then we're going to select our first name with a comma. We are then going to enter a space. And then lastly, we will be doing proper again. And it will include our last name. And once we enter this, you'll see the caps are correctly done. The spacing is correctly done. And you can just autofill this. But let's go into a deeper breakdown of why this works as it works. So from here, you'll go, let's just type in concatenate again. And let me just show you, if I select my first name and my last name, and we enter that. You'll see the caps are wrong. It has joined the two columns together, but there is no spacing. So as you can see, we need a space in our original formula. That's why we have entered a space like we did at the top here. And once we press enter from here, you'll see, okay, we've got our spacing, but our caps are still wrong. And that's where the formula proper comes in. So once you type in proper and we select, let's just do our first one there, then you'll see our caps have been entered correctly onto the word. And that's why we use proper in our formula. So from this breakdown, if we just leave it there, you'll see our first name has been entered correctly because of we've used our proper formula there. And from our last name, it has not been entered. And that's why it's still, this, the, the caps are still incorrect there. So that is our complete breakdown using the concatenate formula with the proper formula to get your spelling and your caps and everything correct and to merge those two cells with one another. I hope you enjoyed the, this tip, guys. I hope you enjoyed all of our tips today. Uh, they are really helpful and it's great tips to keep up your sleeve. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like this video, uh, to subscribe to our channel and comment if you're enjoying these videos and what type of videos you want to see in the future. We've got a lot of plans for the new year and we want to have a lot of exciting projects coming our, your way, but we want your feedback. So please comment anything that you would like to see from us and we'll try to include that in our next videos. Thanks for watching guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time. Cheers.